how fast you can recall something. And you may, you just need more time to sit there and think about it. But getting, I don't mean to get make it confusing about the remembering factual information, but if you, I think that I've always been a little confused by that too, where they say, well, it's hard to learn factual information. But I think that's more about holding it in memory and getting exposed to it over and over again so it goes into long-term memory. But if you have short-term memory problems, then you don't hold on to it long enough to get it into long-term memory. So you have to have more repetition, more review. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the, these visual spatial problems, they can interfere with tracking from one line to the next. So if they're taking a ACT and they're having to put it on a, you know, on one of the answer sheets, then it may be better. One accommodation would just let them circle the answer on the test booklet and then have someone help them transfer it. Do you have a resource or anywhere, as I'm sure you can't go over like all the accommodations for these particulars if there are weaknesses. Is there a resource that you have that would be able to access to look at um, appropriate accommodations for kind of each of these areas? I was thinking the same thing. Well, I did, I did a presentation like on processing speed and working memory, mm -hmm. and, I, uh, and it was just about those two areas. Right, right. So I had the handouts, we'd have to shrink them down. But those give lots of, you know, page after page of, of things to do about processing speed and working memory. I've also given presentations where I, for, for schools, where I just talk about the IQ and then I indicate all these possible accommodations you would want to use. Uh, I think I have that in the computer too. Um, so you may want to just call me. I think our number is our number on the sheet somewhere at the top or on the front page. Or anyway, it's nine five two nine two zero six three seven seven. So we do. I do have presentations I've done where that's exactly what I've done. Okay. I just felt like it wasn't everything sure, I could do in this sure. time frame. But. Yeah, so there's all, there's all kinds of accommodations for these weaknesses. But often, if you've heard of a nonverbal LD, that's someone who has problems in these areas. It's kind of misleading because actually their strengths are in the verbal areas, but their weaknesses are in the nonverbal areas where they have trouble with visual spatial understanding and interpreting abstract visual information. And they usually have trouble with math and science and writing. And they often have trouble Misin they misinterpret body language because they're not, their right hemisphere doesn't work as well. It doesn't pick up on subtle cues in uh, the nonverbal part of uh, communicating. Now, that, that term nonverbal LD has been called into question some, but I think it still has some validity. And then the other part of that, of that perceptual reasoning is the fluid reasoning. Then there's actually two subparts to this. One part is the visual spatial, and one part is the abstract reason. And that, that can, as you can see, affects a lot of more abstract areas, like coming up with solutions to problems and getting the big picture, and of course, understanding math, and even comprehending abstract language, even though there's no language involved. If you have trouble with some of those abstract visual reasoning tasks, it often has a relationship to understanding abstract language, too. So it's the right hemisphere and the abstract thinking. And then the other part is processing speed. And this is just how fast you can do things without making errors. Processing speed tasks on tests are always really easy tasks that everyone can do if given time. But that's not what it's about. It's about how fast you can do it. So you might be asked to scan and circle all the same letter in a row, or circle the two numbers that are alike, or scan and find the symbol that's different. And so it's all about how fast you can do it, because the, the better your working memory and the faster your processing speed, the more mental effort you can put into thinking abstractly and thinking about problem solving instead of saying, okay, now wait, how do I form that letter? Or how do I spell that word? Or how, what's that math fact? Those things slow you down and interfere with your, your problem solving, being able to get the answer. Because you're still back 
a couple of steps. So being able to, well, here's, how, here's what it could affect. Uh, these are just what you have to do on the test. But difficulty completing assignments, time tests, making comparisons, copying information from the board, and of course engaging in more complex problem solving. So, and usually, you know, the accommodations are extended time, and uh, if a kid is, has slow written production, having them learn typing so that they can, that still takes a long time to learn, but having them learn typing and even using voice activated software. I have kids who write so slowly that you just, you know, when they're seven or eight years old, well, there's still plenty of time to work on things, but if they're like fifth or sixth grade and they write really slowly and it takes forever, then if they have pretty good verbal skills, maybe they should start playing with voice activated software to, to bypass some of that. Because you're never going to really, if you give them a test and you ask them to write an essay or even short answer, you may never really see what they really know, unless the other accommodation was, okay, go ahead and take the written test, but after that, come, come with me, and then I'll ask you more. Well, tell me again, what are the three reasons? And then, so test them verbally and in written form. Now that takes more time and more manpower, so it's better to teach them strategies to get around it, like typing or voice activated. And just to, okay, so that's that's the IQ part, and then uh, so if you have questions about that, I know that we went through it pretty quickly, but the, now other ability measures uh, like the Woodcock cognitive it measures long-term memory and short-term memory and reasoning, and it has also has what's called auditory or phonological processing which the Wesher scale doesn't have, and auditory and phonological processing is very important for uh, diagnosing dyslexia or reading disorder. And so I'll talk Did to you about that. Did you cover the subtests of processing speed? What'd you say? Did you cover the subtests of processing speed? Yeah. Oh, I didn't cover them. I'll just show you them again. So what you have to do on symbol search is just scan, and you have to see if one symbol over here <coughs> A symbol here is over here or not. And so you just have to go really fast. And so you have to make discriminations. So part of it is discriminating visual information, directionality, and part of it is short-term memory. If you can look at something and hold it and while you're looking at the rest of them, if your short-term visual memory is good, you don't have to backtrack because you find it immediately. So that's so in a sense, there's a component of working memory in the coding. Oh yes, sure is. So you have that sort of that overlap between these tests. Exactly, you do. Yep, you have to hold it, and then this one you have to copy. Now this one has a definite memory component. You have you know things at the top that have numbers with uh, symbols, and then down here's your numbers, and you have to put the correct symbols in, and you can't. You have to do it in order. But if you have good memory, you know, if you, if you start to memorize, you don't have to keep looking up. And that's why these, are, these two are twins. That's why they go hand in hand so often, because the working memory and the processing speed overlap. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just that those working memory tasks are just auditory. They're just, uh, you just say something. You'll say, repeat after me, or repeat this backward, whereas this is don't forget it also has the motor component. So if you have fine motor weaknesses, then that's definitely going to uh, also interfere because you have to be kind of precise. So it's measuring a lot of things, fine motor, uh, speed of motor production, short-term visual memory. You have to stay focused to do well on it. You can't space out. And I have kids all the time, they'll just start talking and they say, well, when do we have lunch? I said, keep going, keep going. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, they'll space it out. And so, um, so yeah, it's, it's never just one simple thing it's measuring. They're, these tests are measuring lots of different things. So you try to figure that out. I just tested a kid oh, a few weeks ago who came in for testing. And his right hand, he had broken two fingers. And so I immediately I had to start, OK, now wait. What can't I do? Well, I can't do any writing, and I can't test any 
certainly can't do these. Now there are, whenever you have something like that, you can substitute one, there's extra subtests, you can substitute one in two areas. So on this one, I went ahead and had him do this, and it was a bad score. But I, I, no way I could get him to do that, because his hands, you know, he was having to use his left hand. And then on the visual perceptual stuff, I couldn't have him do the locks, so I just had to do the visual 